dang it. A particular comment that keeps popping up occasionally over the years since I started doing the YouTube channel is, how do I delete the air injection system on my Jaguar XJS V12? Well, first of all, let's consider why you would do that. Uh, the main thing is that it's probably not been working for the past 20 years anyway, and I'm going to be doing a video series, believe it or not, a three-part video series on how to uh, do some basic maintenance and repair on your air pump, uh, which is sort of the heart of that system. It's probably not working really well, and you probably got multiple leaks throughout, and those rusty pipes on top of the engine are just, it, they just don't present well. We need to remember when we talk about this that we're actually going to be eliminating a part of the pollution control on the engine. And so if you're concerned about the environment, which we all should be, uh, we need to consider this for off-road use only. Really, I mean it. We're going to be doing this operation on this engine, the one that we put on the test stand a couple of episodes ago. The customer decided belatedly that he would like me to eliminate this system, which is fine because this now gives me an opportunity to produce the tooling necessary to fabricate and modify the parts necessary to do it. So what we're talking about here is, first of all, we've got these two air rails right here that accept air through this T intersection back here, which isn't actually installed at this point. And then there's a line that runs under the cylinder head to that air pump right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get the ball rolling here is to eliminate these two air injection rails. Oh, by the way, if you look down here carefully, you can see the tubes that run from the run from the air rail down to the intake manifold down there. And uh, what that does is it uh, conducts air from the rail, which is under a small amount of pressure, down into the exhaust port. And the purpose of that is to uh, further oxidize unburned hydrocarbons that are in the exhaust. And there's one of these tubes that goes to each one of the cylinders. So let's go ahead and pull this out. Well, when I pushed the button to start the video, I actually just took a still photograph, so here it is. And we'll just kind of go through this the best we can. And at the bottom, you see the oval-shaped uh, seal clamps that uh, the big end, the big hole, goes over the intake manifold stud, and the other end has the air tube passed through it, and underneath that, there's a couple of rubber O-rings. Now, in this particular case, what I've done is I've threaded the small hole to 5 16 national course, and the hole itself is the right tap size to do that, coincidentally. So you need to do that to all 12 of these. Above them, you can see 12 O-rings. There should actually be 24. And then above those, you can see the 3 quarter by 5 16 national course socket head cap screws that have had half of their diameter turned down to the same diameter as the air tube that passes through it ordinarily. And when you get it together, it looks like this. And what you do then is you take, don't know how this is gonna work with one hand on camera, take your two seals, O-ring seals, which would normally go around the pipe, put them around here, 
and that's what you got. Now, some of these rubber O-rings are a little bit different size, and they'll just fall off. Now, these, I think, yeah, they fall off. So what I'm going to do is take some uh, sticky grease and stick them on there with that, and that'll solve the problem. Then it's just a matter of reattaching your intake manifold to your cylinder heads using these instead of the, the rails and so forth. So it works really slick. I've done a couple engines like this and uh, absolutely no leaks. And here we go, ready to go together. No one will be the wiser that anything has happened. It looks really clean. In the end, you'll notice that I went in with this T-handled Allen wrench and gave each one of the set screws about a half a turn in order to tighten, tighten the, uh, the O-rings in there. So there you go. It's just that easy. Easy, but we're not quite done yet. Now, remember I said that there was a T back here that the air came up through to the rails? Well, that's easy enough to eliminate because the two legs of the T up there, that's just, it has tubing that runs from itself to the rail. And you just simply cut that same thing down here. This is a, a check valve in the event that you get a backfire in the engine. Uh, this will stop it from going back to the air pump. And so you cut the hose here, but not so easy is the elimination of this thing right here. This runs from the back of the engine under the cylinder head, to the air pump. And you know, you could just leave it hooked up to the air pump, I suppose, but uh, then you'd have air, if the pump is working, being ejected uh, in the back of your engine, which, I don't know, if there's dirt and rust that's blowing on the back of your engine, is that a good thing? So I guess I would be inclined to disconnect this. Um, you could actually jack your car up Take a, uh, like a body saw, small reciprocating saw, and cut this in a couple of places and pull this loose from under the engine. Or you could just disconnect it from the pump and just leave it there. Um, you know, if you ever have the opportunity to have the engine out, then you could, then you could eliminate it. But, you know, at that point, you got bigger problems than a steel tube running under your cylinder head. Now, another thing that we can't eliminate is the air pump because it serves as an idler for the belt that drives the air conditioning compressor that nests right in there. It's not a big deal. We could just leave the air pump. I mean, it's just going to do what it's going to do normally, except just expel the air overboard. In that video series that I got coming up regarding air pump repair and maintenance, I also have a, a little clip on uh, just basically leaving the guts out of this thing. And uh, it is actually then just an idler pulley. Now, later on, uh, the third engine that you've seen in the engine building room, that one we're actually going to be using as a prototype to replace the air pump with an alternator. Because really, this thing isn't, this thing isn't doing anything at this point. So, by the way, we've already got one of these that has been gutted. Looks the same. Job done.